I met a gypsy. I was one of those people for a while that was kind of like criticizing and I'll be open about that. But the thing that changed my mind was last year's Supercross because Feld could have easily put Supercross in the too hard basket through the thick of COVID and they made it happen and they made Supercross happen at a time where it was very, 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 very hard to make it happen. And as like after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to be critical in the in the lane of like what I can see that I think, and like what you did, you were critical about something, you offered a solution. And I feel like I would like to continue to be critical, but offer solutions, you know, instead of just bashing the sport. Because I definitely had that realization after the, the Feld made Supercross happen last year. I was like, ah, okay. I thought they kind of didn't give a fuck. It was just a side hustle to Disney on ice and all the other shit that Feld's got going on. But right. Dave Prater, that dude was a dog with a bone, obviously. He obviously mm-hmm. wanted to make it happen in a in a really big way. So I think just from that, I'm like, ah, okay, I'm out on the Feld hate now because, like, look what they did. Yeah. Okay, and of course, you can be critical of things, but you you don't want to be critical of them. There's a big difference between critical of individual things than generally, right? And I'll tell you two things about Feld. Uh, the first is you're right; they they saved the sport. Um, if that sport would have not been able to finish, we would be in a bad spot. I mean, we it, it could have sunk the whole damn thing. That's I mean, this thing's moving, right? We got the manufacturers, and it it, it it ends the whole thing. And I know. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know the details of the meetings behind closed doors, but I can tell you right now from the people that I work with on the ground, because that's who I deal with, right? I don't, I don't know, I don't know up the chain, all, all that stuff, but I know Todd Gendro, Steve Yaros, Dave Prater, Doug Cabrera, Sean Brennan, Mike Mewey, Bill Harris. These dudes, they bleed this stuff like the writers do, man. They are, they are so into it. Now they do, they are in a very big company. Big companies are successful because they have to make big company decisions. So it's not always as easy as everyone wants to be where things got to change. Like that, they have, they are a, you don't get that size by just doing what feels right. You got to make hard decisions and they've had to, but the guys on the ground, dude, they're as gnarly as you and I are. They are gnarly fans. So they, I feel probably I would imagine press pretty hard to say we have got to finish this even if it's even if it's bad for us. And they did. And them finishing Salt Lake City in the way they did. And, and let's let's not forget, because a lot of people give the NBA the credit on the bubble because the NBA finished their season in the Orlando bubble. Badass. We did it first. Supercross did it first. We finished a championship before any other sports league. And yes, they're bigger. So they had a lot more to do. I get that. But those dudes on the ground that make Supercross happen, they, I guarantee, when push came to shove, they pushed as hard as possible to make sure that we could finish that damn thing in the middle of a pandemic that nobody understood, that was just still confusing to all of us, and they made it happen and created a protocol that worked with the Mm. state, with the stadium, with the AMA, with NBC. These are all big dogs. Like, we're talking big players in the world game. And they came to a to a formula and they did it and it was not great for them and they did it so for me if you want to criticize the things that they do on an individual I know the purse is always a big one and you can whatever I get that I I, I would never push back on people's individual complaints on things but dude y'all need to understand what they did to save this damn sport and they did it not for the bottom line they yeah. did it for the sport because these dudes are passionate and they love it and that's why again I think we are in good hands because the people that run this sport are trying as hard as possible to grow it and they're trying this and they're trying that and let's try this now and, and of course you're working with budgets of course every dude, everybody works with a budget so you can only do what you can do but they are pushing that line in every way possible and they've created a pretty damn good platform for mm. these superstar athletes to be superstars for these manufacturers to promote their stuff for these gear look at the sport right now the sport is going nuts right now. Participation is off the hook. We are in this prime opportunity to really blow the lid off this thing. And I want everyone to know that the people that run it, it's in good hands, man. They want it. 
bad, really, really bad right now. And I've talked to Dave. I've talked. To, there are things that are on the list of things, the want list of things we want to mm. do. We want to add this. I mean, I know of some things even next year that fingers crossed we can make happen, especially on the lines of what you and I are talking about with these these human pieces. There are things in place that I think are going to all start rolling in in the next few years that are going to give us a chance to get this where we want it. And the people that are running it, dude, they're all in. And yeah. I think they proved that in Salt Lake, and I think that the narrative has shifted on them. Again, you can be critical on the things that you don't like. The track sometimes is too short. Dude, I, I can't argue those points. But we're all trying really hard. And the people, the people that make the decisions, they're all in. So I think we're good, guys. Like, again, I think we're all in this together. Let's just get on the same page. And, like, let's take this thing to a new level because we got all the pieces of the puzzle. We just need to glue it together and go. We're, we're really close. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.